hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is linda if you're a new subscriber you're welcome and if you're a returning subscriber you're most welcome on today's episode of pattern drafting with Maolin, i'm going to be sharing with you guys how to draft this basic jumpsuit pattern if this sounds like what you're interested in you might definitely want to stick around and watch to the end So right now on my work table you can see that i have my measurements here you can go ahead and pause to read i'll briefly explain that this is my neckline this is my shoulder line we'll have the bust point we'll have the on the bust we'll have the bust pan we'll have the bust circumference waist line waist circumference we'll have the hip we'll have the hip circumference and we have the crotch depth or the crotch line so we also have the tie line we'll have the knee line and we have the ankle I'm just going to impute these measurements into my pattern. First of all, I'll be drafting a basic bodice. If you want more details on how to draft a basic bodice, I have a video right there in my channel. I'll also go ahead and put the link on the screen. Let's carry on. So you can see that I have drawn a straight line at the top of my pattern paper that will serve as my shoulder line. And I also went ahead to mark the width and the depth of my neckline which is four inches by four inches that is after marking the shoulder line so now i'm just going to connect this with my curve ruler to form a neckline curve so the next thing i'll be doing now is to come down by one inch at the shoulder tip for the shoulder slope after drawing this i went ahead to use my ruler to connect it in a slanted line now I have my shoulder slope. From there, I'm just going to be imputing my half of my armhole measurement, which is 16 inches divided by 2, which is 8 inches. So after marking this, I use my ruler to draw a straight line vertically to connect the line. Now I will be reeling a straight line like this horizontally, that will serve as my chest line. And from there, I'm just going to go down and mark other vertical measurements. First of all, I'll be labeling this as my chest line or my bust line. The next thing I'll be doing now is to place my tip row at the tip of the shoulder. And that is where I'll be taking my bust point, which is 10 inches. This is my bust point, my under bust of about 13 inches and my waistline of 17 inches and i'll be stopping at the waistline because the jumpsuit comprises of two different pieces one for the upper bodies and one for the lower part and of course the lower part is the trouser pattern so i'll just go ahead and connect this horizontally all the way through so i'll be labeling this as my bust point and here's my under bust and here's my waistline or my half length so the next thing I'll be doing is to impute the half of my bust pad measurement or you can call it the nipple to nipple measurement on all the lines I have drawn except for the chest line. Now go ahead and connect the straight line from there downwards. I'll be inserting my dart intake of about 0.5 inches on both sides. And I'll just go ahead and connect it to the top where I'll be marking 1 inch downwards from the bust point so i'll just roll a line like this to connect it downwards now the next thing i'll do now is to get the half of my armhole measurement and i'll be marking that like so so from there i'll go outwards inwards by half of an inch and i will be using my straight ruler to draw a straight line as usual and from there, I'll be connecting with my curve ruler towards this part. Now, I'll be checking what I have for the chest line. I'll be imputing my quarter of my bust circumference. So after I'm done marking that, that's where I'll be connecting my armhole curve to. Now this is what I have for my armhole curve. So the next thing I'll do now is just to go ahead and duplicate the bust circumference measurement at the bust point. 
and from there i'll be taking the quarter of my round measurement for under my boss which is also the under boss circumference and i'll be adding the darts intake which i have there and also i'll be repeating the same thing for the waistline and i also go ahead and replace the darts which i have taken out and i'll go ahead and connect the lines now if you are drafting this directly on your fabric you should add 0.5 inches below at the waistline like i'm doing and also add the shoulder line for the shoulder joining the one below the waistline is for joining the waistline to the trouser pattern now i'm quickly going to draft the back bodice with zipper on the same pattern paper this is really easy just take your time and pay attention and get this right I added 1.5 inches for the stitching allowance and also connected that into a straight line and that's my stitching allowance so this is going to be my center front around this area I also added 1.5 inches for the zipper allowance so I'll go ahead and just extend the lines upwards to draft out the neckline so for my neckline i'll go down by one inch at this part you can choose to mark any desired neckline of your choice but mine is going to be one inch so from there after drawing the line so i also use my stretch ruler to complete the line heading towards the armhole curve i will be drafting the back armhole so i'll be connecting it from this point like you see me doing i'll just draw a slightly curved line okay this is what we have now i'm just going to blend it into the stitching allowance so this is going to be the back and the front is going to be this part just assume that the front piece is placed above the back piece and that's all next is to cut it out excluding a half inch i added below the waistline because i am drafting on a paper and i'm going to be cutting it out on my fabric later on so i'll just go ahead and cut it out Kindly pay attention and see what I am doing to cut this out because any mistake now would mean that we are altering the back pattern. I also trained 0.5 inches at this part because I want to eliminate the zipper bulge. And it's time to set this aside and draft the lower pattern of the jumpsuit. So I had to glue my papers together for the meantime. And I'll just go ahead and mark 2 inches at this part. And I'll be measuring that all the way down. So this is the angle I'll be drafting my trouser pattern from. The next thing I'll be doing now is to get the hip line measurement from my waistline. So after that, I'll be marking my crotch line or the crotch depth. So I'm just going to use a ruler to connect this two first of all. So this is going to be my hip line. And now this is my crotch line. The next thing I'm going to be doing is to insert the quarter of my hip circumference on my hip and on the crotch line as well. And I'll just go ahead and connect the lines in a vertical way upwards. Now we have our crotch coming together. For the crotch curve, I'll be using my thigh measurement on the same crotch line. So I'll just go ahead and divide the roundness of my thigh circumference by 2 and I'll insert it at the crotch line. That is for the crotch curve. And that became the addition of 3 inches to the quarter of my hip circumference. Now at this angle, I'll be going upwards by 1 inch for the crotch curve. So I'll just go ahead and curve it with my free hand or you can still use your French curve to do that. And now we have our crotch curve. Next, I went down by 4 inches for my tie line. So my tie line is 4 inches downwards from my crotch line. So I also 
connected that into a horizontal line. And after that, I'll just go ahead and divide my tie circumference once more by 2 and I'll be placing that around the tie line and also mark it down. So from there, I'll just go ahead and connect a straight line but I prefer to go inwards by half of an inch to give it a slight curve. Readjusting the pattern paper I have attached earlier for my trouser pattern. This is now my tie. And from this point, I'll be checking the distance from my tie area down to my ankle and I'll get the midpoint. From there, I'll be marking it like you see me doing. Now, from there, I'll be going upwards by 3 inches and that will become my knee length. Going back to the waistline, I'll get the midpoint for what I have around that area and I'll just divide it by two and I'll mark half of it around this part. From there, I'm going to be rolling a line to indicate the waistline. Let me explain once more. I measure the distance between this part to this part and I got the midpoint. From there, I'll just go ahead and include my dart for the front by three and a half inches and I'll roll that downwards. So I'll be taking in half of an inch on both sides for the dart intake. And that will become the front dart. Now the next thing I'll be doing is to go ahead and place my tape rule once more at the waistline to mark out the quarter of my waist circumference plus the one inch I took away from the dart. And I'll be connecting this part downwards to the hip line. Next, I placed my hip curve ruler at the inner seam just to bring out the shape of the front piece. And I'll be drawing that downwards. So at the outer seam, I placed my curve ruler as well to bring out the shape as you see me doing. And I'll just go ahead and connect the lines down to my ankle. And that is our front piece. So for the back piece, I'm just going to remove the parts where I attached the waistline to the bodies. And I'll be adding extra piece of paper at the top like you see me doing. This is to have an extension for the measurement of the back piece. The back piece is usually higher than the front piece. So now I'm going to be checking the distance for what I have around this part. And I'll get to the midpoint. I'm just going to be marking what I have around that part. And from there I'll be going upwards by 2 inches. You can go ahead and mark 1 inch to 1.5 inch, it solely depends on the size of the butt. Moving downwards to the crotch line, I'll be marking an extension of 3 inches. You can use 2 inches to 2.5, still depends on your own body measurements. So I'll be marking 2 inches around this part where you see the hip line. And from there, I'll be slanting my curve ruler like you see me doing to connect the lines in red dots. Now that I'm done with the back crotch, I went ahead to measure what I have for the front waistline and I'll be erasing this line. So now I'll be measuring what I have for my front waistline and I'll go ahead and duplicate that for the back and I'll mark it out. So from there I'm just going to use my ruler to draw a slanted line. Next, I'll just go ahead and get the midpoint from the line. I folded my tape roll to get the midpoint like so. And I'll be marking that out. And from there, I'll go downwards by four and a half inches for my dart intake. And I'll use my ruler to connect it straight to the waistline. After that, I'm going to be taking 0.5 inches on both sides of the dart. And I'll just go ahead and connect them with my ruler. Now that is the back dart, I'm sure you can see a difference between the front and the darts at the back. Next, I'm just going to smoothen out this part into the hip line with my curve ruler. For the crotch part, I'm just going to slant my line into this part by one inch and I'll continue so downwards. For 
For me to take my measurement downwards to the ankle length, I'm going to be attaching another paper here to complete the back piece. Now this is the initial line I was supposed to draw when I was drafting the front piece. So I'll just go ahead and draw it out and this is going to become my front piece. And the other one is going to be my back piece. Going back to the back piece, I'll be adding one inch like I said earlier. And I'll be maintaining that one inch downwards all the way to the ankle length. And I'll just go ahead and connect it to my curved ruler. If you like, you can make your straight. If you like, you can curve it the way I did. It's based on choice. Next, I'll just go ahead and cut it out. If you are watching carefully, you will see that I'm cutting from the back piece. And cutting out this pattern from the back piece would enable me to cut out the back pattern first of all when I'm cutting it out on fabric before trimming out the excess to cut out the front piece. Now that I'm done cutting it out, you can see that both the front and the back piece are in one pattern paper. So I'll just go ahead and mark the front in black marker while the back is in red marker. So this is to indicate it for you guys to understand. And now we are done with our pattern. When cutting it out on your fabric, go ahead and fold in this part of the front so that you can be able to cut out the back piece first of all. And after which you are done cutting with the back, you go ahead and trim out the back piece and cut out the front. And that is basically all for the lower piece. So now we have our upper bodies, which was the first thing I drafted. I'll just go ahead and arrange it like you see me doing. When you are cutting it, do well to add half of an inch at the lower pattern and another half of an inch for the upper bodies at the waistline so that you can be able to join them together when stitching it. And now our pattern just made a lot of sense. And for that of the trouser pattern, when it was time for cutting it out on fabric, I went ahead to add 1 inch sewing allowance all the way around for the back pattern and for the front pattern as well. For the back crotch, I added about 2 inches extra around there, 1 inch for zipper allowance and 1 inch for sewing allowance. Don't worry, I'm going to do a better explanation in our next video. Here is a sneak peek of the jumpsuit. This is how beautiful and clean it looks like. Guys, if you like this video, kindly hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell for more interesting videos like this. See you guys in my next video. Bye!